Kopchek. I'm the uh, sales and marketing director here at ProMedTech. Today, I've got Dr. Roger Beck, who's the chief of podiatry for the North Florida, South Georgia VA healthcare system, uh, presenting on shortwave diathermy as a modality predominantly for pain management, but also wound management. Um, we'll start out having go over the technology and science as a, as a kind of a whole very briefly. We'll talk a little bit about the uh, scientific and clinical data um, and then his experience using it in the field and kind of some of the nuances of the, of the, uh, the technology out there. Um, we'll go over some case and anecdotal data of what he's seen with our products specifically out there. And then after that, he and I can answer any questions you have um, either on the technology or some of the services that we offer um, specifically to, uh, to the field and the VA. So, Dr. Beck, if you want to go ahead and take it from here, we'll listen in. Great. Uh, thanks a lot, Morgan, and uh, welcome to everybody this evening. Uh, glad to be here. I'd like to thank uh, Morgan especially and uh, Pro MedTech for allowing me to present this exciting webinar for you this evening. Um, basically, I have no disclosures other than the fact that I'm paid for uh, to do this presentation by Pro MedTech. Uh, let me start off with uh, just looking at uh, shortwave diathermy. Um, di shortwave diathermy is basically is your application of an electromagnetic energy that's given off the, into the body at a frequency of 27.12 megahertz. Uh, basically, it causes some increase in heat, but the body actually doesn't feel that heat. It's just into the cellular structure. Um, the IMJ classification for shortwave diatherm diathermy uh, for the FDA indicates that it's to relieve pain and to increase the blood flow to the tissues in a treatment area. Um, they rolled and launched this uh, new uh, Replexa Plus um, over um, since uh, uh, late last year. And um, actually, I believe it was in uh, November. Uh, of 2016 uh, when they launched the uh, newest Replexa, which gave the indications to relieve pain by the FDA. Um, it's been an exciting uh, machine that we've used, and uh, let me just talk a little bit about uh, how the shortwave diathermy works. Um, when the machine begins, it provides a cell stimulation, which benefits through a magnetic field, which interacts with or programs the cells to enhance the cellular activity in the first two phases of cell signaling. This includes increased cell metabolism, which makes the chemical transformation within the cells, as you can see in the uh, diagram there, and enhancing the cellular transduction or the cell signaling, so the signals received by the cells can then be transmitted effectively into the cell. This results in an improved activation of the cell response and increases the rate of endogenous opioid expression, which then turns off your pain signals at the nerve ending, providing an anti-nociceptive pain analgesia. How does that all relate to what we do uh, as podiatrists and knowing what we do? Our problems with our patients a lot, so probably the number one thing that they say when they come in is pain, or why else would we be seeing them, unless they have just a pure structural problem that's uh, causing other complications. So we look for ways to help us relieve that pain. And the use of the Replexa or the Replexa Plus now uh, is absolutely doing that for us. The in vitro study uh, was a test performed in an independent lab in Nashville, Tennessee, at 18 different combinations of shortwave diathermy configuration. As you know, you can have long waves, short waves, tall waves, short waves. Um, so there, there, those differences were all tested. The applicator sizes, uh, over 21,000 tests were, conduction, or were conducted, and utilizing the same optimal shortwave diathermy configuration applicator size within the test. This showed that it can increase cell growth of the no normal human fibroblast by over 27%, in, as in the non-controlled, which was uh, far less than that. You can see in the graph that you have in front of you uh, basically what the normal uh, proliferation would be. And that replexa absolutely increases that fibro fibroblast cell replication um, in a, a much greater and quicker uh, application. One of the clinical uh, trials that was done uh, using pulse radio frequency energy for treatment of chronic pain syndrome done by Merapi and Nance, 
uh, showed the uh, the IRB uh, improve, uh, approved the retrospective analysis of 40 patients at the VA Long Beach, four weeks of use using the, the Replexa twice daily for 30 minutes, or the radio frequency. The data demonstrated that the um, pulse radio frequency energy was clinically and statistically effective in reducing pain over time. So over time, remember that, nothing works immediate. So it does take a little bit of time to um, have the machine and for the diathermy radio frequency to work. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. Um, the second clinical trial, uh, the use of pulse electromagnetic frequency in decreasing pain uh, by Zhang and Tierney, uh, showed a 57-year-old male patient with chronic Achilles, Achilles tendon pain and edema treated at the Phoenix VA. The patient showed a dramatic reduction in pain following reflexive therapy in his first 30 days of treatment and at follow-up visits. In the above case, the uh, pulse electromagnetic frequency was an adjunctive treatment used to alleviate the patient's pain and should be considered as an option for such cases. So that relates basically on, you know, some, some people will question uh, whether they still need um, analgesic therapy, such as opioid therapy, Percocet, hydrocodone, whatever you need. Um, the answer from, from, from my standpoint, because I don't believe there's any clinical data on this yet, but um, is that you still need your you still need your um, analgesics of uh, of effect depending on partly and this will probably be a great study for us to do is when you begin the replexa therapy or the pulse electromagnetic therapy because it takes a little bit of time to increase a stimulus although very rapidly um, we still like to utilize the machine for a minimum of 30 days, if at all possible, to get the effect. Although you expect to see the effect within less than, or approximately 14 days or less. Um, the, so it might be something that we look at in the future as to starting or considering the use of the um, device, the Replexa, earlier when you're planning to have surgery and build that up maybe a week or two before your surgery and see if that, that effect will take a, a better relief uh, for your patient. Some of the challenges to shortwave diathermy, uh, it works at the cellular level, which requires time to produce its outcome. Recognizing that when the responsibility lies within the patient, to use the product and use it properly, they often fail to do so. Shortwave diathermy devices are unsupervised home care devices, requiring time of the patient's use and consistent use by the patient to achieve the positive outcome. The largest challenge unsupervised products face is getting the patient to use the device consistently in their home. That's a challenge for each and every one of us, of course, and ProMedTech um, has got uh, ways of how to address that poor compliance. And this is one of the effective, my belief is that one of the effective things that that ProMedTech really does uh, quite well. Uh, the Reflexa Plus Compliance Enhancement Program. This was uh, designed to motivate the patient in using their device consistently on their own and correctly. Uh, a personal in-service is made. The rep goes out to the house, shows the, sets up the device for the patient, shows them how it works, tells them when, when to use it and how to use it. Once they once they have the proper introduction of that, uh, then they just ask them to continue to use it. As you can see, establishing the best treatment routines and the location maybe within their house, so it's obvious, it's in their face, they get it, um, and they're going to use it. Uh, we they continue to work with each patient on a regular basis throughout their entire treatment period. They try to motivate the patient, improve product usage, and provide additional recommendations. They help maintain compliance within the home. If for some reason they're unable to increase the patient compliance due to fiscal responsibilities by ProMedTech, which is a nice thing of them, they inform the clinician and they recommend discontinuance of the therapy. Uh, this obviously saves a lot of money uh, on, in some areas, and this is uh, ProMedTech's fiscal responsibility that they've addressed. Uh, it's a nice program. 
and this will help your patients um, better serve on utilization uh, of the machine. So pretty much that's, that's the directness of, of what we have um, from the use of the machine. And I'll open uh, up some of the, well, let's see, you want to go send you some cases first, Morgan, and uh, want me to talk about some cases and, and then we can go to some questions and answers unless somebody has a uh, absolute question that can't wait. Yeah, I think maybe if you just discuss really quick uh, your experience with some specific stuff out in the field. Um, you've been using it, I know, for quite a while. So um, if you've got any that stick out in your mind of examples of what you've used it on, that would be good maybe, um, different types of treatments, whatever. Well, let me first start out that, that as, the, as the section chief of North Florida, we have seven facilities and 18 podiatrists that I oversee. So we have basically a, a multi-center uh, use of this, of this machine which is, uh, so we have well over 100 or more um, people that we've already used this machine on. And that's, uh, we feel that gives us a little bit of knowledge and understanding of how everything's working for us. So one of the, uh, one of the patients that I had was an Achilles rupture that, that came in. Um, and when we got to him, he was uh, approximately 18 months past the rupture. Uh, came in, had a big knot in the back of the leg, uh, quite a bit of pain. He was limping, uh, having difficulty. It had very little palliative care, but uh, had been immobilized at one time uh, by, by uh, another physician. Um, he first came in, I, I immobilized him again, and I put him in a cast for six weeks and let it rest. Then we took him out of it and started some physical therapy. Uh, and you know, it didn't seem to be getting um, significantly better. We tried some uh, amniotic injections, uh, and those didn't really seem to help. Um, but overall, his, his problem was not stopping him from doing what he did on a daily basis, but he had a lot of pain uh, with that, as well as what we found out, of course, in the initial uh, assessment, was that he also was troubled with peripheral neuropathy. From diabetes. So we started him on the reflexive machine to see if we couldn't reduce some of that chronic pain. Well, lo and behold, um, we didn't. So he didn't get any better or not significantly better to make a difference with his Achilles tendon, but what the reflexive, we believe what reflexive did was reduce his pain of the neuropathy. Interestingly enough, how do we know? We stopped the reflexa after about four months, and he began to have more pain again. We restarted the reflexa approximately three months later, and within a month, he says, you know, the Achilles is not working out too well, but my diabetic neuropathy has been better today than I've ever had it. So we said, well, this is interesting. We let it go, and he continued to get and have a considerable amount of improvement in his daily activities, and uh, his pain levels were at a level that he could tolerate. So we continued the reflex of, uh, for a total now of probably six or seven months, and then we decided that to purchase the, the device for him so that he could have long-term relief. Um, a fantastic case. Um, he hasn't been lost. I still see him approximately once a year, um, and. Uh, We'll keep following him uh, as long as he wants us to. So that's a great case. Um, a second case that we had was a nice uh, obese uh, female who came in, was having, uh, had had surgery uh, on the top of her foot, was having considerable uh, uh, pain. And we determined that it was a deep perineal neuritis. And uh, so I ended up uh, reoperating on her to free up those lesions. Uh, putting a, again, we put an amniotic graft in there uh, to try to lessen the uh, proliferation of uh, uh, increased collagen and lessen the proliferation of the fibroblast. But then we started her on Replexa. Uh, the Replexa reduced her pain so much that she went from a, an 8 out of 10 to about a one over 10 in about a three month 
two to three month period. Um, we thought this was interesting, so what did we do? The same thing we did last time. Stop the Replexa, see if she was, she, how she did, and within six weeks, she was calling us saying, I need that machine back. We restarted it, her pain improved, and we've, we've kept her on it forever. So again, that's a, another um, phenomenal uh, result from what we thought was gonna be something long-term bad. Uh, the final case I have for you is a case of plantar fasciitis, which of course is probably our number one diagnosis in podiatry. Um, had a patient approximately 42 years old who came in, I was complaining of chronic pain for about eight years. Um, he said that he'd been through every shot and every physical therapy modality that he could think of and absolutely nothing had helped him. Uh, we changed his orthotics. Um, uh, which was critical in my opinion since he uh, had a little uh, uh, biomechanical issue. Uh, then we put him on the Replexa immediately since there wasn't really much else we could do. Um, the Replexa uh, took about two weeks. He came back and we reevaluated it in two weeks. And he says, well, you know, I think it might be working a little bit. I'm, um, I'm using it twice a day. I'm really, you know, giving it my best shot. And we said, that's great. Keep using it. We brought him back at a month. Um, he kept saying it was getting better and better. We had him at two months and then again at three months. And by the end of three months, um, we had reduced his pain to he was out playing tennis. So <laughs> the Replexa Plus, uh, although out a short time, there, I'm, I'm certainly familiar with the older Replexas that were started out and since I've been doing this now for a while. Uh, they've all worked so phenomenally well in reducing pain that it's a no-brainer for uh, us here in North Florida to uh, to utilize the, the mechanisms that we have here on a regular basis. Uh, that is pretty much the, um, the gist of what I have for you as far as cases are concerned. I can go on and on since we have hundreds, but uh, uh, with time and uh, that you guys have, I'm sure you have some questions that uh, I'd be happy to answer at this time. John, you want to jump in with any questions from anybody? Yeah, just a second here. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Dr. Beck. Hi, my name is uh, is Luke. I'm a, a student. I was just curious on uh, the duration that you can actually use this type of uh, therapy. Uh, the best use of this therapy, what's typically prescribed, is twice a day, 30 minutes at a time, 8 to 12 hours apart. Uh, I'll give you a really quick anecdote here. We have a lot of patients that start using it, get good results, and they oftentimes will call us and say, can I use it more? Can I use it all the time? You know, I've got nothing but time on my hands. And I always equate it to a light switch, where what we're essentially doing is increasing the rate at which cells can properly communicate with each other, and then, of course, all the resulting actions that stem from that. So once your light switch is on at the end of that 30-minute period, that's as on as they're going to get. Um, that process naturally declines over the course of 8 to 12 hours, which is why we do twice a day. So I know that's a little bit of a long-winded answer, but twice a day, 8 to 12 hours apart, 30 minutes at a time is going to get you the best statistical results that we can provide through just scientific analysis of the technology. And I think also to add to that, I think one of the parts that I get out of this question is, um, can you use it forever? And the answer is yes. And I'll do one more qualifier on that. If you do use it more than 30 minutes, it doesn't hurt you because we get that as well. People ask if I use it for two hours, is it gonna you know, microwave my foot off? And the answer is no. Um, there's no real added benefits to using it more. Um, and it won't be, you won't have any problems stemming from that. Any other questions? Yeah, hi, this is Mark Ellis. I'm one of the, one of the doctors here at the VA. Um, all of the cases that you reported uh, were addressing pain, is that correct? The, the Mirpuri study and then the Phoenix VA? Yeah. Case study of one. Those are predominantly pain studies, yes, sir. Okay, and then and then the anecdotal ones. The first one was on an Achilles rupture, 
And what was the second one that whose pain went from an eight to a one? The, sec the second case that was per that was my personal case was uh, a neuritis from a deep perineal entrapment. Okay. Okay, and then the last one was plantar fasciitis. Correct. So, uh, one question I had would be, you know, it's you said you got seven facilities and eighteen podiatrists using this, and you use it on more than a hundred. Um, you know, why why haven't you documented your results and and published them? It seems like if you're getting great great responses, and this is a great uh, a great treatment modality or, or adjunct treatment modality, then then we should we should document this and and you know everyone needs to know that it's good. There just seems to be a sparsity of 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 literature on this. Yeah, we're 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 in a pre you know the ProMed technician did some previous had some previous studies that were in the pipeline and pain and um, and we have some that are will come through all of this. We'll do some retro retrospective studies. Um, we're working on currently we're working on post-op pain and plantar fasciitis specifically. Uh, but uh, those are, that's a great question, and um, I'm sure there'll be more to come. This is uh, something that we've pretty much just got going with uh, as far as uh, how much we wanted to do or, or could could opt to do. And uh, we're tallying all these things now and, and pulling all that in to uh, hopefully do something like that in the near future. Yeah, Dr. Ellis, okay. I'll jump in on that as well really quick. We So in fall, we essentially, well, the last year and a half, we completely re-engineered our device to get a different FDA indication. It's the same technology, but we've removed some of the limitations that we had on a previous technology. And what we're doing now is specifically with the North Florida system, um, we're moving forward, like Dr. Beck just said, on a retrospective case analysis of post-operative pain patients, um, focusing specifically on that. We're doing a IRB-approved prospective study with Salem and potentially the Richmond VA right now on specifically plantar fasciitis. And then we'll also be doing through the West Coast and most likely in Southern California uh, through the orthopedic departments on shoulder, um, shoulder pains, full shoulders. So the biggest reason why we haven't done that in the past, to be perfectly honest, is the size of our business has gotten to the point now where we have the time and resources dedicated to full clinicals um, for our newly indicated product, which came out in November. So, um, the stuff that we had before is, is case data, small publication on our technology, and like I said, now we've got three studies um, that we're trying to push through. One is IRB perspective, and the others are going to be most likely retrospectives. But North Florida's seen a ton of volume, and we're definitely doing something with uh, with that whole area, specifically, like I said, the post-operative pain management. Okay. And the, the plantar fasciitis one is the prospective one that you mentioned? Yeah, that's an IRB prospective up out of Salem with Dr. Uh, Eliza Lee. Um, and we were actually trying to get sponsored by the VA, um, but that one fell through. So we're still doing the study, but we were actually trying to get timing to get uh, um, uh, a sponsorship from the Salem VA because they sponsor IRB studies as well. Okay. And is that one using the Replexa alone or is it as an adjunct to a variety of different treatments? What's, what's the, the protocol on that one? That's going to be a problem, plantar fasciitis, uh, as a as a its own therapy. We've actually tried to do a um, adjunct therapy to a modified topaz procedure, dry needling. If you guys do that over there, I'm sure. Um, and what we ended up finding out is that, like we kind of briefly touched on, compliance is always an issue, which is one of our big service aspects in the field. And what ended up happening is patients weren't using it post shot because the steroid kicked in and they were feeling really well. So. That was kind of an interesting, you know, kind of smack on the forehead where we were like, of course, I'm not going to use it. Um, so moving forward on the plantar fasciitis, it's going to be on problem plantar fasciitis patients prior to a surgical procedure of, of snipping the plantar fascia, but um, after they've already gone through, you know, icing, stretching, offloading orthotics, um, shots uh, as, its own, as its own form of therapy. So it'll be specifically on shore of diathermy through the Replexa Plus device. Okay. And have there been any studies on on the other um, application of increasing blood flow that would that would show you know, how long the blood flow lasts or the increased blood flow lasts and, and what what's used to measure that increase in blood flow what are what are the what are the parameters of that sure with diathermy really has two parts to it the electromagnetic which is communicating to the cells 
And then the actual diathermy, which is the heat part, which is essentially we're getting thermal benefits through a non-thermal therapy. So, in the, again, this is an older technology. So any studies moving forward, we've actually had the same request for that with our product on measuring blood flow increases to treatment sites. So um, the reps there should have some previous studies on the technology for wound management, um, which is going to be directly applied from increasing blood flow. Pretty much companies that use shortwave diathermy are going to equate blood flow treatment to the fact that through vasodilation and an increase of blood to those treatment sites, um, that's what's essentially causing fresh, fresh blood to come in. Uh, but we're waiting to do our study on that as well. And, and once we start pulling off something on, again, I've, I've, we've already got three studies going. So on our product, we don't have anything in terms of what's increasing blood flow, um, but that's something that we're looking to pull forward as well. Right now, the predominant use of our product is pain management. Um, wounds are tricky to say the least. So we've seen the majority of our use in pain management, which is why we're kind of driving everything towards that right now. So that, that would be an indication that you have more confidence in? You're, you're saying to focus on the pain relief well, aspect of it? As I think blood flow? Yeah, I think Dr. Beck might actually be able to speak a little bit better to this. You know, the, our numbers, probably three-fourths of our, of our patients are pain management patients. So, you know, and this isn't by any result of our marketing towards it. Um, I think that just naturally physicians have used the product and they find great results through pain management and they kind of naturally skew towards really tough chronic pain situations. So, Dr. Beck, maybe if you want to talk for just a second on – your use of the product on wound versus pain and, and how you guys maybe got towards pain management because again, the, we haven't really pushed for pain. We're almost doing it reactionary because everybody uses us for pain is what's kind of happened. Yeah, we, um, so I, I think what happened was a lot of us, uh, they came, when ProMedTech first came to us, I believe we started using it. It was more or less a uh, pain management uh, uh, device. And so that's, I think what you get in your head and that's what you start to order and use it for. Then we started to think about it, well, it's for increase in, in blood flow or increased vas causing vasodilation, increasing your oxygen levels, which then, of course, increases your fibroblastic activities, uh, which is then you're, now you're at your cellular level. And so we say to ourselves, well, this should be able to work with wounds as well. Uh, so we did. I know we do have some of, our, some of the uh, uh, physicians here are using it on their wound care. And we do see uh, some significant changes. Uh, we have chronic wounds that are, you know, now, uh, you know, activating and starting to heal, and and you're you're seeing uh, excellent granulation tissue, um, even some become you know, hypergranular. Uh, we we don't know 100% whether we can attribute it to to that or to the reflexor or not, but uh, that's the only newest device uh, that we encountered and that are currently using. Uh, for some of these uh, wounds differently than what's already been done, uh, and, and it's been making a difference. So, you know, granted, there's, there's all the um, uh, advanced modalities that you can use uh, from the other companies, uh, graphs and stuff like that, that, you know, claim to do all that same thing with stem cells, et cetera. And, and granted, you know, we're not going to suck those off because we're going to keep them around, and they, they, do their, they do their work as well. Uh, but I think uh, when you've got a person who's a diabetic and and, and certainly at risk for loss of limb, um, I think you start to to say, well, what else can we do before we, you know, have to do such a an aggressive amputation? And uh, so I think the the, the grafts and the reflexa have been a um, uh, a great adjunct to, to treating these people and making and improving their uh, their condition. Mm -hmm. And that one, I think one um, of the things, let me, let me interject sorry, something ahead. here, if I may. One of the things that, that does come up and no one has asked this evening, uh, not surprisingly, but uh, it, it would have come up at some point in time. We talked about post-op pain. Well, what do you do when, when you have post-op patients? A lot of them have uh, uh, implants. So a total ankle, uh, screw, you know, whatever implant you want, plate. Um, so for me, and I and I do all of those. I, I I have the whole gambit of of, of stuff that I put in. Um, I've been using it and have had no trouble with people complaining of burning or a burn uh, uh, to their skin or internally or that they can't use it because it hurts. 
Um, that's, that's the beauty of this device. Um, it, it, it increases heat, but it really doesn't cause a burning type of heat. And it's, and it's the way that the uh, physics of the mechanism within the machine is that uh, doesn't cause that. It only hits the cellular level. Yeah, that's definitely a, a plus. Have you had any complications? Uh, you mentioned no no physical burning, just the sensation of warmth, but any complications with using this? We've had absolutely no complications whatsoever. Some people will, you know, if someone complains that they're, you know, they have an issue or something like that, we, we you know, obviously watch it very closely. If we feel it, it might be due to the reflexa, then we would stop the reflexa. But we've, we've had no complications that has warned us to say, oh, my God, stop this right now. Mm -hmm. And that deep perineal uh, nerve entrapment where the pain went from an eight to a one, uh, but then as soon as yep. she was off, she had to start it again. Is she just yep. on the reflexa indefinitely, or what's what's the long term outcome of of that patient? We, yeah, we we uh, we've lost touch to her, although we can still probably get in touch with her. She stopped coming. I can only hope that that's for the good. Um, we did see her for about a year and a half um, regularly, and uh, maybe two years, and um, the the pain continued to stay well as long as she used the reflexa. Uh, so. Uh, because we haven't heard from her, we ended up, you know, we purchased the machine for her so she could use it long term, and we, we have not heard back from her uh, recently. Yeah, and Dr. Ellis, just really mm -hmm. quick, in the case of having something like a chronic pain management, which we do get um, both on, on surgical procedure patients as well as more often than not on something like a plantar fasciitis, like a chronic plantar fasciitis patient, one of the things that we'll do um, is if the VA can purchase our, pro our product as well, and we actually will uh, prorate months rented against purchase price to bring that price down. And we kind of have a thing where it's basically if eight months have been total rented, um, we cut it down to half cost so that it's just cost effective for the patient. And like Dr. Beck was kind of saying in there, we do what we call chronic pain checks where we will pull the patients off or we'll recommend, of course, that we pull the patients off of the therapy. And then if we can prove that it's a chronic issue, because a lot of times your patients will crutch on a therapy once they get positive results for something. So they'll be on this for two to three months, they'll see positive results, and they just won't want to give it up. So we can go in, we'll pick up the product, and ideally, if they feel better, they're off. Um, however, in those chronic pain checks, if, they, if the pain comes back online, they really want to get it, we go back on, at some point, we'll go through, primarily we'll drive it through prosthetics, um, and then we'll say, hey, we're going to recommend doing a purchase. We'll prorate rents, months rented against the purchase price, save the VA some cash, and then essentially we'll still support that patient, but we take it off the rental schedule. Um, and that's only in the cases where we've proven that this is going to be a chronic pain patient and may need it for an extended period of time. Um, so we kind of just do that. And, and, of course, we coordinate with with you with everything here, but we also then coordinate with prosthetics because, process for purchasing is a completely different process than just putting in rental consults. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much for, for your guys' time and presenting this tonight. I'll, uh, I'll, anybody else have any questions? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been my pleasure. And again, thank you uh, to Morgan uh, for and ProMedTech for allowing me to present. Uh, appreciate uh, all of your time. And I think uh, really the best thing and the best way to know whether uh, this is effective for you is to uh, find sure. your several patients and give it a try. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Anything else from uh, Dr. Ellison's group over there for Scott or anyone? John? Uh, no, I, I think we're good here. Um, thank you for your time again, Dr. Beck and, and Scott and, and Morgan. Uh, really appreciate this. So um, what we'll, we'll kind of yeah if any questions pop up we'll we'll obviously we can email you um and whatnot but uh this has been great so i really appreciate you guys time great thank you guys so much i appreciate it please feel thank free you. to email me if you have any other questions absolutely will do thank you great thanks guys